My name's Diana, um, I'm an independent mental health advocate. Um, and the independent mental health advocate was actually introduced in 2007 as part of the Mental Health Act and it entitles people that are detained under some sections of the Mental Health Act to actually be supported whilst in hospital. It was uh, brought in as an extra safeguard to ensure that people's rights were upheld. The qualifying patients are those that are detained on the ward under the Mental Health Act uh, 1983. Also those who are um, subject to a guardianship and those on a community treatment order. There's also sometimes informal patients are actually entitled to an independent mental health advocate and those that's those that are being considered for Section 57 tre treatment and those under 18 who are being considered for Section 58A treatment. The responsibility of an IMHA is where a patient would like to access the service because it's not a compulsory service, is to help them to understand their rights whilst they're in hospital. Um, also to support them at meetings, um, to help them understand any treatment that maybe that they're actually having or being considered for. Also those that are in the community who are on community treatment orders and guardianships, we can also support them in the same way, attending meetings. Um, we can also go to tribunals with people. There are some limitations to the role. There's um, some sections of the Mental Health Act that are referring emergencies, in which case the, the patients don't qualify um, for our support. Also, the, um, the, the role of the, the IMHA is there for the, the um, patient and not for the nearest relative. However, there is other advocacy services that could offer support to nearest relatives. The open advocacy model is something that the Trust has adopted to ensure that there's an equal access to the IMHA service for everybody throughout the county. Um, what happens is, is, is um, patients are given full information about the IMHA service and as long as they don't object, there is actually an automatic referral from the Mental Health Act Administrator. Um, if somebody lacks the capacity to actually decide whether they want an IMHA or is, or is assessed to lack the capacity, what would happen is um, the team would make a in uh, best interest decision and decide whether to make the referral to the IMHA.